we would, for the purpose of our time together, endeavor to preach with this text in our minds and this topic in our minds, what we learn from the test. What we learn from the test. Would you pray with me? Our Father, our God, we come with great honor for this privilege of preaching. Yes. Praying, O oh God, that the master preaching privilege you would give us preaching power. Mm -hmm. We realize and understand that preaching cannot be done unless you come. Yes. Pray, O oh God, that you would fill us with your spirit. Yes. And I would sit down and that you would stand up and read. Mm -hmm. That these your people that are called by your name would be the word of those that are saved might be encouraged. Mm -hmm. If by chance someone is lost, they might come running saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do we say? Mm -hmm. Oh God, I study, but I need your spirit. Mm -hmm. Pray, but I need your power. All right. Preaching cannot be done unless you come. So hide me now behind my cross of Calvary. Yes. These your people would see absolutely all of you, positively none of me. One more time, Lord. Okay. One more time. <coughs> Let us feel the Holy Spirit one more time. Lord, here I am. Yes. Nothing. Praying that you do something with nothing again. That your word might go forth, that you might get all the praise. All the in, precious, in your precious Son, Jesus, then we pray. Amen. Amen. Thus you may be seated. What we learn from the text. What we learn from the text. The J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles, California, houses a collection worth $6.9 billion. The Metropolitan Museum in New York City, New York, houses an art collection worth $2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. Sotheby Auction House in <laughs> England last year in their most recent earnings statement rather reported earnings of $805 million dollars. Right. Christie's, their competitor, in their most recent earnings statement reported earnings of seven billion dollars. Right. These institutions are pillars, foundations, important uh, functions in the art world, and brothers and sisters, they all have the same problem. Yeah. All of them deal with the issue of forgery. Right. The issue of inauthentic pain. Yeah. Uh, the issue of fakes that are passed off to be the real thing. Yeah. Uh, they're worth billions of dollars, these museums and these auction houses, but they deal with the problem of fakes. So for that reason, they got wise. They decided to bring someone on board called an authenticator. All right. All right. And before painting hung in a museum or sold at an auction, the authenticator must come in and test the painting. Right. Y'all are looking at me funny, but I'm standing this morning to tell you that we serve God who's an authenticator. All right. All right. And before our lives can be held up as great examples of what it means to follow him, he must test Scholars say that the issue with inauthentic artwork is that it gives the artist a bad reputation. It gives those who look at the picture misinterpretation and misinformation about the artist and the problem with inauthentic and forged Christians who are not rooted as deeply as they ought to be in God is that they give God
we can consider this matter of testing more deeply and more carefully. There is an epistemic question brimming and bubbling on the surface of this text, a question concerning the very way we know things. You understand the function of a test in a classroom is so that a teacher might find out what a student knows. All right. Because even after all of that teaching, and even after all of their instruction, and even after all of their tutoring and their guidance, the teacher still stands at a distance from what the child really knows. All right. So the, the test functions as a, a pedagogical assessment of how much you caught after what the teacher threw out the information. Yeah. The teacher doesn't know on their own independently how much you know, so they must test you, they must quiz you, they must examine you, and here is the problem. All right. yeah. We serve God who knows everything. Yeah. Yeah. We serve God who's everywhere at the same time. Said this morning, Dr. Robert Smith, that great scholar says that God can't even go anywhere. Because if he would move, he'd bump into himself. So why would God, who knows everything, already still take time to test us? I'm glad you asked. God does not test us so that he might find out something about us he didn't know. But God tests us so that we know we are who we say we are. Y'all ain't got to say amen, but I still got to preach. You go through the test so that you know that your roots are deep. You go through the test so that you know that you know that you know on Christ the solid rock I stand on. does not test us so that he might uncover or discover anything new, but God tests us so that our testimony, our relationship, our walk with him might be authenticated. The test is from, from Abraham. Still, we must observe the strange shape of the text. Amen. Because God calls Abraham in chapter 12. Right. Abraham, get from your kindred, from your father's house, go to the land that I'll show you. I'll make you great, the name great. I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, and you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And from chapter 12, up until chapter 22, every time God gives Abraham a command, he makes a promise. All right. All right. Every time God asks Abraham to do something, the command is accompanied with a promise. Let me see. If I can bring it down the street, let me see if I can preach it where you can reach it. It's easy to be obedient when it's to your benefit. It's easy to serve the Lord. It's easy to lift your hands and clap your hands when you know he's going to bless you and keep you, protect and preserve. It's easy to be happy when things are going well and when the promises of God are blooming in the garden of your consciousness. All right, all right, all right. For 10 verses, every time God asked Abraham to do something, he said, I'm going to bless you. For 10 chapters, rather, every time God asked Abraham to execute a command, it was clearly to his benefit. In chapter 22, the nature of God's communication with Abraham takes on what Alexander McLaren calls a strange shift. He says, Abraham, Abraham says, Lord, here am I, here I am. He says, take your son, your only son. Take your son and, and, and go 
to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering to me. Take your son. The, the thing that is the core of your very heart. Take your son. That which represents the physical manifestation of the first promise I gave you. Take your son. That which gives you joy. Let, 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 let's get closer to the text. When the promise of the child is made, Sarah laughs and Isaac's name means laughter and God. There's no promise here. Mm -hmm. There's no, if you do that, I'll do this here. But such is the way God tests us. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No brothers and sisters, we must examine ourselves in the resplendent light of this text. And ask, are you only serving him for the blessing? All right. Uh, are you only serving him for the promise? What happens when the command doesn't come with a blessing? Right. What happens when the command doesn't come with money in your pocket? What happens when the command doesn't come with an easy life and a convenient life? What happens? Abraham, get some earth. In the morning. All right. I'm happy now. Come on. Did he sleep well? No, he didn't. I don't know. I, I doubt. But what the text says, he got up early in the morning. When God asks you to do something, and you're really serving him with your whole heart, you ought not tell him. You ought not wait. You ought not drag your feet. When you're really trying to please the Lord, yeah. when you're really trying to serve the Lord, you ought not tell. Yeah. He has an unspeakably difficult task, mm -hmm. but yet he gets up early in the morning. Yeah. Text, brothers and sisters, teaches us this. Here's the first thing we learn from the test. The test examines the priority of God's word in Abraham's life. Right. 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 To make you hold on to your faith when you deal with the deep and difficult and dark moments of life. Is it word enough? Yes. First, the priority of God's word in Abraham's life. Abraham gets up early in the morning. You got to see this now. Call now Abraham is north of a hundred, and you got to see all text home with you. You're never too old to get tested. Every step I'm happy now. Every step. Oh, 
was a chance for him to turn around. Every step there was a chance for him to throw up his hands. Every step was a chance for him to say that God was being unreasonable, that God was being unreliable, that God was being inconsistent with himself. And if you're honest here with the Lord, you can say, I'm not here because every step was an easy step. Says, son, the Lord 
Mm. We'll provide. Mm. I'm making that way now. Progressively through this text. Progressively through this moment of authentication. Progressively through a test that functions to deepen Abraham's relationship with God and show us that Abraham's testimony is authentic. Let me help you. I'm not impressed by your perfection. I'm not impressed by how good you are. What impresses me is what you come over. What impresses me is what you come through. Well, what impresses me is how many times you were knocked down and still got up and said, For God, I live, and for God, I die. That's what an authentic testimony looks like. I had some good things. I had some hills to climb. I had weary days and sleepless nights. But when I look around, An old man, Abraham, begins to bind his son's hands and feet. God. You all not change the text. Because Abraham is close to the hundred mark. God. And Isaac is a young man in the prime of his life. Right. So Isaac is so submitted to the will of the Father. All right. See, something has to die. 
with what the Lord oh, had given him. Oh, but all after, mm -hmm. after Abraham passed the test, yeah. right? okay. the Lord showed us that he will provide. Oh, uh, you got, you got uh, to climb uh, some high mountains. Yeah. And uh, you Yes, 
Jesus. Oh, 